wird so dann wieder. Das ist mit einem Gebet an. We thank you for the opportunity to learn from your word. Wir danken dir für diese weitere Möglichkeit von deinem Wort zu lernen. And we ask that you would please deliver us and give us a spiritual mindset. Und wir bitten, dass du bitte unter uns bist und dass du uns einen geistlichen Verstand gibst. And please open our eyes that we would see things according to your word. Und bitte öffne unsere Augen, dass wir die Dinge gemäß deines Willens sehen. And help us to pay attention and to be able to follow. And help us that we are aware and follow. And I thank you and I ask for your blessings in Jesus' name. And I thank you and I ask for your blessings in Jesus' name. Okay. Um, if we begin this morning, let's go to this quote that I posted. It says, let us give more time to, to the study of the Bible. We do not understand the word as we should. The book of Revelation opens with an injunction to us to understand the instruction that it contains. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. God declares, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. When we, as a people, understand what this book means to us, there will be seen among us a great revival. We do not understand fully the lessons that it teaches, notwithstanding the injunction given to us to search and study it. Now, this paragraph here, if we were just to read it in context with the Bible, also wenn wir diesen Absatz einfach im Kontext der Bibel lesen würden, because it says here, blessed is he that readeth and hear the words of this prophecy. Weil es sagt hier, gesegnet ist der liest und die die Worte der Weissagung hört. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Und diese Dinge bewahren, die darin geschrieben stehen, denn die Zeit ist nahe. Okay, so... Where does that apply to for us prophetically? And worauf ist das um, für uns prophetisch anzuwenden? Yes, when we when we come to this, we come to here, right? When we to the plan box come. The, the Lord's telling us, blessed is He, right here, because the time is at hand, right, which would be here, right? Hier ankommen, sagt er, gesegnet ist derjenige, denn die Zeit ist nahe und das wäre dann hier. Okay, and it says, when we as a people understand what this book means to us, there will be seen among us a great revival. We do not understand fully the lessons that it teaches, notwithstanding the injunction given us to search and study it, right? So, the revelation is of this book will be given to us in, in here, right? Die Offenbarung von diesem Buch wird uns hier drin gegeben. Okay, next paragraph. Nächster Absatz. In the past, teachers have declared Daniel and the Revelation to be sealed books. So we know that Daniel and the Revelation is one book, right? Wir wissen, Daniel und Offenbarung ist ein Buch. So Daniel is the prophecy, but re the Revelation is the revelation of of Daniel. Daniel right? is the prophesying, but um, the Offenbarung is the Offenbarung from Daniel. Okay. It says, um, in the past, teachers have declared Daniel and the Revelation to be sealed books, and the people have turned from them. The veil, whose apparent mystery has kept many from lifting it, God's own hand has withdrawn from these portions of his word. The very name, Revelation, contradicts the statement that it is a sealed book. Revelation means that something of importance is revealed. Now, she's talking about back in her time, and in her time they had much light on the book of Revelation. Right? Sie spricht jetzt um, über ihre Zeit, und damals hatten sie viel Licht über die Offenbarung. Okay, but when this happens in our time, right, when that is opened to us, right, 
there will be seen among us a great revival, right? Wenn das in unserer Zeit passiert, wenn um, dieses Buch für uns geöffnet wird, dann wird es unter uns eine große Erweckung geben. Okay, so it's revelation means that something of importance is revealed. The truths of this book are addressed to those living in these last days. We are standing with the veil removed in the holy place of sacred things. Right? So, just go to, um, I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Geht zu 1. Korinther 3. Ah, 2. Korinther chapter 3. Okay, so um, okay, just let's begin verse one. It says, do we begin again to commend ourselves or need as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation for you? Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. So he's speaking about the church of the, the new covenant, right? Er spricht also über die Gemeinde des neuen Bundes. Yes? Yeah. And such trust have we through Christ to God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Okay, so, when the veil is over Moses, he's saying that it's glorious, right? Als the, der Vorhang über Mose war, dann sagt es, war das herrlich. Okay, the Old Testament was glorious, the types and symbols. Das right? Alte Testament, die Typen und Symbole waren herrlich. But, The veil prevents us from seeing that which is even more glorious, right? Aber dieser Vorhang hält uns davon ab, das zu sehen, was noch herrlicher ist. Okay, so when that veil is removed, we will have this great revival, right? Wenn dieser Vorhang weggenommen wird, dann werden wir diese große Erweckung haben. Because the letter killeth, but the spirit brings life. This is what causes you to stand upon your feet, right? Weil der Buchstabe tötet, aber der Geist, der bringt Leben. Das führt dich dann dazu, dass du auf deine Füße stehst. Okay, Vers 14. Vers 14. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Right? So this, this is the problem. Right? This, this veil Right, that prevents us from seeing that which is glorious. Right. Das ist das Problem. Da gibt's diesen Vorhang, der uns daran hindert, dass wir das sehen, was herrlich ist. Okay. And Isaiah was stood between the porch and the altar, and the veil was removed. Right. Und Jesaja stand zwischen Säulenhalle und Altar, und der Vorhang wurde weggenommen. And this is verse 16. Right. Das ist Vers 16. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. 
Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So it says, repent, be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the, when the Spirit comes. Right? Times are refreshing, right? Es sagt, tut Buße, bekehrt euch, dass eure Sünden ausgetrickt werden, wenn die Zeiten der Erfrischung kommen, also wenn der Heilig, also wenn der Geist kommt. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Right? So when you go back to this quote, right? Gehen wir zurück zu diesem Zitat. In this, the mm, second paragraph again. Nochmal zum zweiten Absatz. It says, in the past, teachers have declared Daniel and the Revelation to be sealed books, and the people have turned from them. The veil, whose apparent mystery has kept many from lifting it, God's own hand has withdrawn from these portions of his word. The very name Revelation contradicts the statement that it's a sealed book. Revelation means that something of importance is revealed. The truths of this book are addressed to those living in the last days. We are standing with the veil removed in the holy place of sacred things. We are not to stand without. We are to enter, not with careless, irreverent thoughts, not with impetuous footsteps, but with reverence and godly fear. We are nearing the time when the prophecies of the book of Revelation are to be fulfilled. Right? So it's just our own, it's our own ideas, the human traditions that have caused this veil to be over it, right? Das sind einfach unsere eigenen Ideen, diese menschlichen Traditionen, die verursacht haben, dass der Vorhang darüber ist. It says, we have the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. Priceless gems are to be found in the word of God. So what's the word of God? Was ist das Wort Gottes? Gems. Yeah, the spirit of prophecy, right? And, and the commandments of God. Right. It says, Those who search this word should keep the mind clear. Never should they indulge perverted appetite in eating or drinking. If they do this, the brain will be confused. They will be unable to bear the strain of digging deep to find out the meaning of those things which relate to the closing scenes of this earth's history. When the books of Daniel and Revelation are better understood, believers will have an entirely different um, religious experience. They will be given such glimpses of the open gates of heaven. Right? Who was given a glimpse of the open gates of heaven? Wem wurde ein Vorgeschmack von den offenen ähm, Toren des Himmels gegeben? Go to Genesis twenty-eight. Verse ten. Mose twenty-eight, verse ten. It says, and Jacob went out from Beersheba. And went towards Haran, and he alighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took off the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And that's the latter rain, right? Das ist der and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee. So Jacob had the 
Revelation, right? Also Jakob hatte die Offenbarung. And it says in verse 16. In Vers 16. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place! This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Right? The gate of heaven is the revelation, right? Das Tor des Himmels ist die Offenbarung. The ladder ascending to heaven, right? Und diese Leiter, die stieg zum Himmel auf. Okay, so go back to the quote, right? Gehen wir zurück zum Zitat. Mm, just read that quote again, the second from last, okay. 1143. Noch den vorletzten Absatz, 114.3. When the books of Daniel and Revelation are better understood, believers will have an entirely different religious experience. They will be given such, such glimpses of the open gates of heaven that heart and mind will be impressed with the character that all must develop in order to realize the blessedness which is to be the reward of the pure in heart. So Jacob was given a revelation of the ladder. Right? Jakob wurde die Offenbarung der Leiter gegeben. What's the ladder? Was ist die Leiter? What did we just read? Was haben wir gerade gelesen? Mm. Oh, it says there will be some such glimpses of the character that you must develop. Right? Also steht, ihnen werden um, Einblicke des Charakters gegeben, die man entwickeln muss. Okay, so when you have this new birth, you've now got these eight steps until the end, it's just like the sanctified life you've got to walk, right? Okay, it says, The Lord will bless all who will seek humbly and meekly to understand that which is revealed in the revelation. This book contains so much that is large with immortality and full of glory that all who read and search it earnestly receive the blessing to those that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. Amen? Amen. Okay, so just go, go to Matthew 24, right? Geht zu Matthäus 24. Now, you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, right? Got Matthäus, Markus, Lukas and Johannes. Matthew, Mark and Luke write about this end time scenario here in their Gospels, right? Matthäus, Markus and Lukas schreiben über dieses endzeitliche Szenario in ihren Evangelien. Okay, if you go to verse 29, Gehen wir zu Vers 29. he's speaking here about the destruction of Jerusalem. Er spricht hier über die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. It says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give a light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And that is right here. Right? Das ist hier. Okay? It's marking this point when you're delivered. Das markiert den Punkt, wenn du befreit bist. One group's delivered and the other group is destroyed marking the destruction of Jerusalem. Eine Gruppe wird befreit, die andere zerstört. Das markiert dann die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. Okay. And this morning, I was thinking about this. I thought, well, wait a minute. John John had the same understanding, but it's in the book of Revelation, right? Und heute morgen habe ich darüber nachgedacht und habe gedacht, ähm, ja, eigentlich hatte Johannes dieselbe ähm, offenbar, also dieselbe Darstellung gezeigt worden, aber in dem Buch Offenbarung. Okay, so, it says, when the heavens and earth are shaken, here verse 30. Wenn Himmel und Erde erschüttern, dann lesen wir Vers 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Right? Okay, so, let's go to the book of Revelation, right? Gehen wir jetzt zum Buch Offenbarung. And go to Revelation chapter 6. Geht zur Offenbarung 6. Miss this point, right? Wir haben diesen Punkt. Uh, Because ja, when we've corrected ourselves now on the book of Matthew 24, we need to also correct ourselves on this, right? Wenn wir uns jetzt in dem Buch Matthäus 24 korrigiert haben, müssen wir uns auch hierin korrigieren. Okay. So, go to verse 12. Geht zu Vers 12. And here is Matthew 
24, Vers 29. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she shaken of a mighty wind. Now Jeremiah and Ezekiel, what are they warning about? Und vor was waren Jeremia und Ezekiel? Come on, it's always about something we just read, so just... The whirlwind. The whirlwind, right? Wir waren vor dem Wirbelsturm. Right, so here is this whirlwind, right? Hier ist dieser Wirbelsturm. Which would agree with this, right? Das würde damit übereinstimmen. Okay, so, and just to keep your, just keep your place there and go to 2 Thessalonians. Haltet euren Finger, hier geht's 2. Thessalonicher. Vers 3. 2. Thessalonicher, 2. Vers 3. It says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Right? So, right here, falling away, right? Here, the speck fell. Okay, because at the cross, what fell? Bei was fiel am Kreuz? Sorry? Well, at the cross, what fell? Was is on Kreuz gefallen? Yes, go, go to Revelation chapter 12. Gehen wir zur Offenbarung 12. Revelation 12. That's where we're going to read it then. Wir lesen das in Offenbarung 12. Verse 7. Verse 7. It says, and there was war in heaven. What's this war? Was ist das für ein Krieg? It's the battle of Armageddon, right? Das ist der Kampf von Armageddon. That's what it illustrates. We've put this in place, right? There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was the place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which de deceiveth the whole world he was cast out of the earth and his angels were cast out with him right this was the cross right das das Kreuz. satan's plan failed right? satan's plan had versagt. and if you just go uh, to verse 4, the same illustration. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Right? What's happening there? The stars are falling to the earth, right? Okay, it's illustrating the, the, this point, right? Okay, so... Um, where were we? Go back to yes, Revelation six. Yes. Gehen wir zurück zur Offenbarung sechs. Vers 13. It says, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she shaken of a mighty wind. So. Who's, which tree? Also, was ist das für ein Baum? The fig tree, which is God's people, right? Der Feigenbaum, das ist Gottes Baum. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens of the rocks and the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? 
right? But what I want you to see, right, at least in this level, it's talking about here, right? Was ich euch sehen lassen möchte, zumindest auf dieser Ebene spricht es über diesen Punkt. Okay, and th this, this, this point, really understanding this in correlation to this is, is very important, right? Es ist sehr wichtig, dass wir diesen Punkt im Zusammenhang mit diesem Punkt verstehen. Okay, so... What? <coughs> the, the only question I would have now is um, in the seventh seal. Okay. Well, the seventh seal is here. It's the third wall. Also, it's only because no, we'll go to that now. Just go, just go to Revelation 11. Also, this is the question what with the seventh seal is, and that would be. No, the Revelation 8. Sorry. No, no, we'll go to Revelation 11, right? We begin at the first of the book. Okay. We'll come to that point in a minute. It says, There was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city, shall they tread under foot forty and two months. Right, so we looked at this lately. What, what is it? Wir haben uns das äh, vor kurzem angeschaut. Was ist das? I'm not giving you the answer, guys. We've spent just the, all the week went through this. These things, you need to put them in your mind and not forget them. Wir sind da letztens durchgegangen. Diese Dinge müsst ihr in euren Verstand legen und nicht vergessen. Sorry? Yes, yeah, it's, it's the great... It, well, it's not in Luke 21, it's in, um, in, in Matthew 24, right? No, it's not. It doesn't say great tribulation in Luke 21. It says it in Matthew 24, right? That is the great tribulation in Matthew 24. Okay, so in the great tribulation we looked at was this, um, was this whole Period of trouble, right? Und die große Trübsal haben wir uns angeschaut, das ist diese ganze Zeit der Trübsal. Okay, and it says in verse 3, Vers 3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Now, just on this point, right, we been looking at the book of Daniel, right? Zu diesem Punkt, wir haben uns ja das Buch Daniel angeschaut. Okay, so we know, right, that here you have it, right, that there's, I'll just write here, and try not to smudge everything else out. It says, this is the great tribulation. Das hier ist die große Trübsal. Right? And it's a parallel to the 70 years, right? It's a parallel to the 70 years. And the 70 years, in, in one sense, in the book of Jeremiah, begins when they go into captivity here, right? Die 70 years, in einem Sinne, also im Buch Jeremia, spricht darüber, wenn, oder fängt an, wenn sie hier in die Gefangenschaft gehen. And historically, in Daniel chapter 1, that's what's been represented, right? And historisch wird das dargestellt in Daniel 1. Right? So... In Matthew 24, the Great Tribulation begins here with the sign, right? In Matthew 24, fängt die große Trübsal hier mit dem Zeichen an. But the Bible, and through also through help of Sister White, also takes that sign and brings it down to here, which is this sign here, right? Über die Bibel und auch äh, White, sie nehmen ähm, dieses Zeichen und sie bringen es hier hin und das wäre eben hier dieses Zeichen, right? Okay, and hence when we come to Daniel chapter 1, right, we have this, because it's, it's marking this three years, right? Deswegen, wenn wir zu Daniel 1 gehen, da haben wir dasselbe, da ist man diese ten days, drei right? Jahre oder diese zehn Tage. We can see that those three years and this ten days is illustrating the investigative judgment, right? Wir können sehen, dass diese drei Jahre oder die zehn Tage das Untersuchungsgericht darstellt. Okay, if you just look here, right, there's a, 
Um, and Revelation 11, right? Und hier in Offenbarung 11. It told to rise and measure the temple of God. And the measuring is a judgment. Right? Und da sagt es, er soll aufstehen und den Tempel Gottes messen. Das Messen ist ein Gericht. Okay, and in verse 3, what's the two witnesses doing? Und was machen die zwei Zeugen in Vers 3? Sorry, prophesy. Die prophesyen. Yes. In their in sackcloth, right? In the sackcloth. Right? So they're, they're, in, they're in the sackcloth and ashes, right? Die sind in Sacktuch und Asche. Which is like this mourning. Das right? ist wie dieses Klagen. And the, the other point I want you to see, right, is that this is the great tribulation, but it's also, it's like the experience that they have in here, right? Den Punkt, den ich euch sehen lassen will, es ist diese große Trübsal, aber es ist wie diese Erfahrung, die sie auch hier drin haben. Because Christ, right, suddenly comes to the temple here in Ezekiel chapter 40, right? Weil in Ezekiel 40 kommt Christus plötzlich zu seinem Tempel. And what does he do? Was macht er? He's measuring, right? Er misst. He's measuring the temple until here and then the Holy Spirit enters it, right? Er misst den Tempel bis hierhin und dann kommt der Heilige Geist rein. What are you doing on the Day of Atonement? Was machst du am Versöhnungstag? Yeah, you're in mourning, you're in sackcloth and ashes, right? Du ähm, klagst, also du bist in Sacktuch und Asche. What is it that you're to give here? Was sollst du hier geben? The testimony, das right? Zeugnis. So you can see the exact same thing is being illustrated here on a bigger level, right? Dann sehen, wie das genau dasselbe eben auf einer größeren Ebene dargestellt wird. Right? So constantly you you see that um, Christ from temple cleansing to temple cleansing is we we read the quote, right? Where it's shown It's the investigative judgment, right? Wir können das auch sehen und haben das Zitat gelesen, dass Christus von Tempelreinigung bis Tempelreinigung, das stellt eben das Untersuchungsgericht. Okay, but those things are really perfectly re referring to here, right? Aber diese Dinge beziehen sich vollkommen hier auf. So it seems that constantly when you look at these things, Matthew 24 is showing us the great tribulation, but it wants you to see that the sign that is at the beginning perfectly fulfilled here, right? Also es zeigt uns ähm, beständig, dass eben diese große Trübsal, die ist vollkommen hier, aber dieses Zeichen, was hier gegeben wird, ähm, weist sich eigentlich hier auf. Okay, so, now, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not moving uh, Revelation 11. Revelation 11 is the great tribulation. It's this time, these two witnesses, right? Also ich ähm, be bewege das jetzt nicht von seinem Platz in Offenbarung 11, also diese... Ähm, das ist diese große Trübsal. Okay. Anyway, just let's read, right? Also wir lesen Vers 4. Weiter Vers 4. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Right? So hence you have an illustration of the plagues in this time. Right? Deswegen gibt es hier eine Darstellung der Plagen in dieser Zeit. Okay. Um, it says, and when they shall have finished their testimony, right? They're giving a testimony, right? Sie geben ein Zeugnis. But, it, but Sister White says, when they are finishing, right? Weil White sagt, wenn sie es am Beenden sind. The beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So... I wanted to to look at this and for me at least I would understand that that would bring us down to, to this point right also ich wollte das jetzt anschauen und ähm, ich zumindest verstehe dass das über diesen Punkt hier spricht. because the two witnesses now are going to be put to death Weil right diese zwei Zeugen werden jetzt zu Tode gebracht this would be for these three and a half days das right? wäre für diese dreieinhalb Tage Okay, um, 
Verse 9. Verse 9. And there of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they sh that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, right, and this is the point, this three days and a half is a symbol of the Great Tribulation, right? So this, what I'm saying, is taking this Great Tribulation and it's showing that it's just the same experience but on a much more intense level, right? Das ist was ich sage. Also es nimmt diese große Trübsal und es zeigt es hier ähm, dieselbe Darstellung auf ein, in einem intensiveren Maße. Okay, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So, when life enters into them, that's the new covenant, right? Das Leben in sie eintritt, das ist der neue Bund. Because at the beginning here, the veil is removed, they have the revelation, and then they stand upon their feet, right? And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain, of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, what does it say now? The third woe cometh, third woe cometh quickly. quickly, right? Right, and that's an agreement what we're looking at, right? The day of the Lord is, is nigh at hand for them now, right? Das ist in Übereinstimmung, was wir uns angeschaut haben. Es sagt jetzt, dass der Tag des Herrn für sie nahe ist. Okay, so, this, what I've been, I've been going back to everything, trying to piece the pieces of this puzzle together, right? Ich bin zu allem zurückgegangen und habe versucht, diese Puzzleteile wieder zusammenzufügen. Okay, so, now, now comes to the, this point, verse 15. Jetzt kommt es zu diesem Punkt in Vers 15. So, 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 so verse 14 says, the second was passed, behold, the third woe cometh quickly, right? Vers 14 haben wir noch mal gelesen. Okay, verse 15. Vers 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of the Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God in their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, we give thanks, O Lord, God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. The nations were angry. Past tense. And, the ra and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants. Uh, the prophets unto the saints and them that fear thy name small and great and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth right now who who were the ones that destroyed the earth Bis Vers 18 wer waren diejenigen der die die Erde zerstört haben Babylon, ba Babylon right Babylon. In Isaiah 14 right Das haben wir jetzt angeschaut in Jesaja 14 so, so now he's here coming to, to punish them, right? And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunders, and an earthquake and great hail, right? Okay, so I just wanted to see that this is the end of the um, second war, right? In the, Third war cometh quickly, right? Ich wollte euch sehen lassen, das hier ist das Ende der zweiten Wehe und die dritte Wehe kommt schnell. Okay, and the 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 third war is the seven last plagues, right? Und die dritte Wehe sind die sieben letzten Plagen. Which is where he puts in the harvest the second time, right? Da ähm, erntet er dann zum zweiten Mal. Okay, so the, this is the first sickle. Das ist die erste Sichel. Hier ist der Second sickle, right? Die zweite Sichel. It's the harvest, das right? Die Ernte. With, where the wrath of God is poured out. Wo der Zorn Gottes ausgegossen wird. Okay, with that in mind, now go to Revelation 8, right? Mit dem im Gedächtnis gehen wir jetzt zur Offenbarung 8.
Okay, so it says, when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I always struggled with, with this, right? Ich habe immer damit um, Schwierigkeiten gehabt. In the past, I remember asking Jeff this question, how can the, how can the sixth seal be opened after the seventh seal is opened? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever, right? Ich hatte um, immer... <coughs> diese Frage gehabt und habe auch Jeff gefragt, wie kann das sechste Siegel geöffnet werden nach dem siebten Siegel? Das macht gar keinen Sinn. Okay, but you can be sure that Matthew, Mark and Luke are in agreement with Revelation chapter 6. Right? Ihr könnt euch sicher sein, dass Matthäus, Markus und Lukas in Übereinstimmung mit Offenbarung 6 sind. John is giving the, the same Testament, right? Johannes gibt dasselbe Zeugnis. And that's very purposeful why the, the Lord has done it that way. Put this here in the book of Revelation and giving you three witnesses in the Gospels, right? Das hat seine Absicht, ähm, warum Gott es so gemacht hat, dass das in der Offenbarung ist und diese drei Zeugen in den Evangelien. Okay, so I'm saying that this is the sixth seal, right? Also wir haben gesagt, das ist das sechste Siegel. And I'm also Marking here the seventh seal. Und ich markiere hier auch das siebte Siegel. Right, so when you go here, Revelation 8, right? Gehen wir zur Offenbarung 8. When he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour, right? And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And the seven trumpets typify what? Die sieben Posaunen, was schaffen sie voraus? The seven plagues, Die sieben Plagen. which pour out here, right? Und hier right? Because this is the, this is marking the, the close of probation, the, the, the third woe, right? Okay, das Ende der Gnadenzeit, die dritte Wehe. Yes. Yeah. Okay, with the seven last plagues poured out, right? Die sieben letzten Plagen ausgegossen werden. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given him to much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. So, my only conclusion is that showing you this, this last opportunity for these Gentiles to come in right here. Also, meine einzige Schlussfolgerung ist, dass es dir hier diese letzte äh, Möglichkeit zeigt, dass die Heiden hier noch reinkommen können. Okay, let's look at it a second. It says, um, Another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given him to him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne and the smoke of the incense which came up with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it to the earth and there were voices and thunders and lightnings and an earthquake. Now we know the code, it marks when the... Angel, right, um, says that the sealing is finished, right? Und wir kennen das Zitat, das markiert, wenn der Engel sagt, dass die, das Versiegeln äh, jetzt abgeschlossen ist. So he returns ist. to Christ and saying, I've done what you've commanded me to do, and now the seven last plagues pour out, und right? Er kehrt jetzt zu Christus zurück, er sagt, ich habe das getan, was du mir befohlen hast, und dann werden die sieben Plagen ausgepasst. Ross often, often <coughs> wondered what this in verse 1, this half an hour is. Right. Wir haben uns immer gewundert, was das bedeutet, diese um, Zeit von der halben Stunde. Okay, so, not going to put a human interpretation on it, I'll just still don't understand it, right? Also ich werde keine menschliche Interpretation jetzt da reinlegen, ich verstehe das immer noch nicht. Okay, doesn't matter, I'm tempted to do that, but I won't. Anyway, um, go, go to Revelation 14. Gehen wir jetzt zu Offenbarung 14. To these two um, times he puts in the sickle. If you go to verse uh, 14. Mal, die Sicher Gehen wir zu Vers 14. So in verse 14 he says, And I looked and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Right, and another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, 
for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Right? That's right here. Right? This is done here. Okay, so what do you see? You see him on a cloud, right? Du kannst sehen, er ist auf einer Wolke. Just go back to Matthew 24. Geh zurück zu Matthäus 24. And verse 29. It says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give a light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. Now this was the sign that they were asking for, marking the destruction of Jerusalem. Right? Das war das Zeichen, nachdem sie gefragt haben, das markierte die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. The sign is him sitting on the cloud. Right? Das Zeichen ist, wenn er auf der Wolke sitzt. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Right? And that's what you see in Revelation 6. Und das kann man in Offenbarung 6 sehen. Okay, so go, go back now to Revelation 14. Gehen wir jetzt zurück zu Offenbarung 14. Vers 14. Vers 14. It says, I looked and behold a white cloud. There's the sign of the Son of Man, right? Das ist das Zeichen des Menschen. And upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Right, so he, he thrusts in the sickle and reaps, right? Er wirft die Sicke rein und erntet. Now it brings you to Revelation 8. Jetzt führt es dich zu Offenbarung 8. Right? Because in Revelation 8, you don't see him, the only time you see him leave the temple is when he pours out the seven last plates, right? So if you just see that, he's just put in the sickle, he came out the temple, says put in the sickle, and he now goes back into the temple, right? Also er kommt aus dem Tempel heraus und sagt, wirf die Sichel rein, und dann geht er wieder zurück in den Tempel. Okay. Um, Keep your place there, Revelation 14. Go back to Revelation 8. It says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. So the third woe cometh, Quickly, right? And another angel came and stood at the altar. So th there he is. He's coming back in now from putting in the first sickle and he comes and stands back at the altar, right? So he comes now back from the first sickle and he comes and stands back at the altar. Having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints because there's still this opportunity for them to repent. Right? Upon the golden altar which is before the throne, and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand, and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it to the earth, and there were voices and thunders and lightnings and an earthquake. Right? Right here, right? Vers 5, 4. Okay, so now go back to Revelation 14. Geht jetzt zurück zu Offenbarung 14. Vers 17. Vers 17. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. Right? And that would be these angels with the trumpets. Right? Das sind jetzt diese Engel mit dem Posaun. And another angel came out of the altar which had power over fire. So here's Christ that was at the altar. Yes, Christus, der bei Altar war. And cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. 
and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it unto the great winepress of the wrath of God. Right? Which is, which is here, right? Das wäre hier. Can everybody see that? Can I see that scene? Okay, so he's showing us this, this great mercy. He's saving these people here right at the last minute. And this zeigt uns diese große Gnade. Er rettet diese Leute hier im letzten Moment. And it's all because the two witnesses stood right here. Und das alles nur, weil die zwei Zeugen gestanden festgestanden because when they get told to come up hither who sees them Weil wenn ihnen gesagt wird kommt hier herauf wer sieht sie their enemies Ihre right Feinde. it says a great fear came upon them right es sagt, große furcht kam über sie okay and i personally think that that's what brings them to repentance here or at least some of them right ich persönlich denke das bringt sie dann eben Okay, now just remind you of this point. Go back to um, go back to First Kings. Or go, go to First Kings, should I say? Chapter 18. Kapitel 18. To Mount Carmel. Now, we know these prophets of Baal is the external power, right? Wir wissen, dass diese Baalspropheten die externe Macht ist. Right? And I, 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 I'm having some, let's just say, right, we, we have the testimony of Genesis 41, right? Wir haben ja das Zeugnis von 1. Mose 41. In Genesis 41, brings you down to here, right? When he's having this, he's having this dream, right? Now we know this quote. It says uh, there's going to be a great revival amongst God's people. But before that time, the enemy will bring any counterfeit, right? We know this quote. It says that under God, the people will have a great awakening. But before that time, the enemy will bring any counterfeit, right? We know this quote. It says that under God, the people will have a great awakening. But before that time, the enemy will bring any Two in Daniel four and also in Genesis forty one, you see the same illustration. Uh, the, the king always goes to these false prophets first, right? In Daniel two and Daniel four and auch erste Mose einundvierzig hat man diese selbe Darstellung, dass der König immer zuerst zu diesen falschen Propheten geht. But we see in, in every single one of those experiences, they were not able. To tell the king the dream, right? Aber wir können sehen, in jeder einzelnen von diesen Erfahrungen waren sie nicht in der Lage, dem König den Traum zu deuten. Right, and here Elijah brings them up to to Mount Carmel, right? Hier bringt Elia sie jetzt zum Berg Carmel rauf. Okay, and there's this contest now now taking place, right? Es findet dieser ja Konflikt oder dieser Kampf statt. In verse 21. Vers 21. And Elijah came and told the people and said, How long? Halt you between two opinions, right? So there's two opinions, right? Zwei Meinungen. Okay, the, the righteous and the false. Die Gerechten und die Falschen. But who gets to go first here? Wer darf aber zuerst gehen? The false, right? Die Falschen. Okay, so that's in agreement with the testimony that, that, that before that time... There'll be a counterfeit, right? Wir sind überein schon mit dem Zeugnis, wenn es sagt, vor dieser Zeit gibt es eine Fälschung. And and are they able to 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 do what they want to do here? Und können sie dann das tun, was sie tun wollen? No. Nein. So I want to suggest that this is an agreement with these magicians and sorcerers that are there. They 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 are not able to do what it is they desire to do, right? Ich möchte vorschlagen, dass das in Übereinstimmung ist mit diesen Magiern und Zeichendeutern, sie sind nicht in der Lage, das zu tun, was sie wollen. Okay, and they prophesy from morning, from morning, noon, till evening, right? Prophezeien von morgen, mittags bis abends. Okay, and it's like a parallel to when, in Daniel 2, when he asked them these three times. 
Das wäre eine Parallele in Daniel 2, wenn er sie diese dreimal fragt. Okay, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure how to illustrate that, right? Ich bin mir nicht ganz sicher, wie wir das darstellen sollen. How, where, where, would you, where would you put this illustration? How would you illustrate it on, on a line? Wo right? würden wir diese Darstellung hin tun? Also wo würden wir sie auf der Linie darstellen? But it, uh, but go to verse uh, 29. Gehen wir aber zu Vers 29. It says, it came to pass when midday was past that they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. This is the double measure, right? Das ist das doppelte Maß. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullocks, the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he says, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he says, Do it the third time. Right? So he does this three times, right? Er das dreimal. And then verse 36. Jetzt Vers 36. It came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell, right? And that fire is the latter rain, right? Dieses Feuer ist der Spätregen. Okay, it says, And consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is the God, the Lord, he is the God. So what happens right there? Was geschieht dann dort? Well, it doesn't say that, but I, I'm not arguing, but just based on what we're reading, right? Uh, and, and it's not wrong what you're saying, but just stick to the narrative here, right? When that fire comes down from heaven, what does it cause them to do? Yeah, yes, I fall on their faces, but who are they, who are they now acknowledging? Sie fallen auf ihr Angesicht, aber wen erkennen sie jetzt an? Ja, yeah, they're, they're, they're now worshiping the true God, jetzt right? Jetzt beten sie den wahren Gott an. Okay, so their prayers will be ascending to heaven, right? Ihre Gebete werden in den Himmel aufsteigen. And Elijah said to them, take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them. So as soon as that fire comes down from heaven, the third woe cometh quickly, right? Weil dieses Feuer vom Himmel kommt, da kommt die dritte Wehe schnell. Okay. And, and Elijah said unto him, okay, that's a different illustration, right? So, nächstes dann eine andere Darstellung. It's marking the time period of the seven last place. Okay, die Zeitspanne der sieben letzten Plan. Just a thought I have tested it here, but with uh, Noah, right, he went into the ark. Yes. That would be the shut door for Jerusalem. Yes. And then seven days later, the flood came. Yes. So it's here, right? Yeah, yes, yes. Da ist noch ein Gedanke, der ist noch nicht geprüft, aber das wäre dann so wie Noah, der ist in die Arche gegangen, das wäre dann die geschlossene Tür auf Jerusalem und dann diese sieben Tage, bis die Flut kam. Yes. So, <coughs> I had this thought that even if one of them had repented, the Lord would have opened that door and let them in, right? Ich hatte auch diesen Gedanken, dass wenn auch nur einer von ihnen Buße getan hätte, hätte der Herr die Tür geöffnet und sie reingelassen. Yes. 
but non, non repented. <laughs> just know because he's shown you the mercy of the Lord. He, he would have opened that door and let them in, right? Das zeigt einfach die Barmherzigkeit des Herrn. Er hätte die Tür geöffnet und sie reingelassen. Okay. So I have I'm keeping a complete open mind to all these things. We need to go back and really need to open our, our minds to these things, right? What is it that God is trying to teach us? Ich halte jetzt ein, ein komplett einen offenen Verstand und wir müssen eben alle einen offenen Verstand bewahren und uns fragen, was will der Herr uns lehren? Okay, because I have this great struggle in my mind now and trying to correctly understand the book of Daniel, right? Ich habe jetzt dieses große Ring in meinem Verstand das Buch Daniel richtig zu verstehen. Okay, we, we understand the principles, we can see all those things, what they point to, but how do we, how do we illustrate those things on a line? This, this is the great puzzle that we got to bring together, right? Also wir verstehen zwar die Prinzipien richtig, was es ähm, darstellt, aber das ist ähm, jetzt dieses große Puzzle, wie stellen wir das auf unserer Linie dar? So the question I have is in regards to Daniel 1, is Daniel 1 representing both the beginning You know, like, like Matthew 24. Ich habe jetzt diese Frage über Daniel 1. Stellt Daniel 1 eben beides da, also den Anfang und das, diese kleine Box, so wie in Matthäus 24. Because it's represented those 70 years, Weil right? Weil stellt diese 70 Jahre da. Okay. And Christ, when he begins here, does three years, right? Und wenn Christus hier anfängt, sind es drei Jahre. Okay. So, is it... Is it Is it to be understood at one level, it's represented at some level, but another level just brings you to there? These are these questions that I have, right? Soll es dann darstellen, dass es auf einer Ebene das Sonntagsgesetz darstellt, aber auf der anderen Ebene bringt es dich dahin? Das sind nämlich Or, die Fragen, die ich habe. Or, is it just that on the big level, he's trying to teach us about this great tribulation that's right here, right? Oder möchte er uns auf dieser großen Ebene über diese große Trübsal lernen, die hier ist? Okay. So, um, but, but at least myself, right, I, I can see that Daniel's 1-4 have definitely been illustrated, uh, illustrating this, this experience, but where, where, my question is, where, where do I put the, the king when he's having his dream in these three times? And also, where, where would you put these, these false prophets right here? Right. Also ähm, ich zumindest kann eben sehen, dass die Kapitel Daniel 1 bis 4 ähm, die, also stellen diese Erfahrung dar. Aber meine Frage ist, ähm, wo setzen wir diesen König hin, wenn er den Traum hat und diese falschen Propheten? Because it's at the, it's at the end, it's at the end when he asks him the three times that he makes the death decree, right? Weil das ist am Ende, wenn er sie, diese dreimal fragt, dass er das Todesdekree macht. And the death decree is what begins the investigate judgment of the living. Das right? Todesdekret fängt dann damit fängt das Untersuchungsgericht an den Lebendigen an. Okay, so is it something that's just marked there at the beginning, right? Ist es etwas, was dort einfach nur am Anfang markiert ist? Okay. But anyway, the, these are these are questions that that I that I have. Das sind um, einfach Fragen, die ich habe. Um, okay, we were meant to go to to Daniel 6 today, but I had I wanted to really <laughs> These thoughts in place first, also right? Wir wollten eigentlich zu Daniel 6 heute gehen, aber ich musste zuerst diese Gedanken an den Platz setzen. We must remember Daniel and Revelation is one book. Wir right? müssen einfach uns erinnern, dass Daniel in Offenbarung ein Buch ist. And it's all based upon the structure of Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13. Das right? ist alles basierend auf der Struktur von Matthäus 24, Lukas 21 und Markus 13. So we must study these things in conjunction with each other, right? And we must keep doing it. It's like a A Rubik's cube until we get all the pieces in the right place. Also right? Wir müssen diese Gedanken eben zu, in, also zusammen studieren und das ist eben ähm, wie so ein wie nennt man das? Rubik's Würfel. Rubik's Würfel, den man eben richtig yeah, it's like macht. Ja, you know, a Rubik's cube, yeah. right? Yes, it's like this big puzzle, right? Also das ist ähm, ja wie ein großes Puzzle. Eben. But we can we can praise God. That he doesn't leave us in darkness, right? Aber wir können Gott preisen, dass er uns nicht in Finsternis lässt. So you can be sure that when that, if that veil opens up there, we're going to see things 
like we had never really understood before. You can be sure prior to that point, he's already trying to correct us on some things that we haven't fully understood, right? Also, when uh, here this Vorhang um, lifted and we then really Dinge sehen werden, die wir noch nie gesehen haben, da können wir jetzt sicher sein, dass er uns auch schon vor diesem Punkt eben um, versucht zu korrigieren und dass wir auch Dinge sehen, die wir noch nicht so gesehen haben. Okay, so therefore the experience that we are having right now is a correct experience, right? Und die Erfahrung, die wir gerade jetzt haben, ist eine richtige Erfahrung. It's part of the struggle, right? Ist ein Teil dieses Kampfes. It's the truth that sets us free. Es ist die Wahrheit, die uns freisetzt. And if you're not striving with every nerve and fiber to understand these things, you're not going to come to that conclusion. Wenn du nicht strebst mit jedem Nerv und jeder Sehne, dass du diese Dinge verstehen kannst, dann wirst du nicht zu dieser Schlussfolgerung kommen. And, and brothers, this is just a warning. Don't rely on any human being for your salvation, right? Und Geschwister, nur eine Warnung. Also, ähm, also seid nicht abhängig von irgendeinem menschlichen Wesen für eure Erlösung. Okay, so as much as the Lord is helping us to understand many things, you, you must Go to the Bible and prove all things for yourself, right? Also, sehr der Herr uns auch hilft, diese Dinge zu verstehen. Wir müssen zu unseren ähm, Bibeln gehen und diese Dinge für uns selbst prüfen. Okay, your faith must be your own faith, not the faith of somebody else. Dein Glaube muss dein eigener Glaube sein, nicht der Glaube von jemand anderem. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's close with prayer. Lass uns mit Gebet abschließen. Lieber himmlischer Vater, ich will dir auch danken für dieses Morgenstudium. Auch für die Gedanken und die Fragen. Und ich möchte dich bitten, dass du uns hilfst, unseren Teil zu erfüllen. Dass du uns hilfst, dieses Werk fortzuführen, dass wir nach um die Wahrheit bitten. Dass wir unsere Herzen durchforschen. Dass wir offen und bereit sind, die Wahrheit zu sehen und zu erhalten. Bitte hilf uns heute und segne uns mit einem geistlichen Verstand. Dass wir über all diese Fragen nachdenken. Und dass du uns hilfst, dass wir zu einem besseren Verständnis dieser Dinge kommen. Bitte segne die ganze Bewegung und hilf, dass jeder bereit ist für das, ähm, vorbereitet ist für das Seminar. In Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen.